Hi guys, Pete here in 6QW and today we're going to take a tour of uh, the Simple Seaver uh, version 2.0 which uh, I just completed and got in a box I uh, got the case all put together metal top sides were approximately four and three quarters inches wide three inches high and about eight inches deep and uh, everything is built on two circuit boards the lower circuit board is almost a complete transceiver itself and the upper board has the Arduino and has the uh, receiver RF amplifier which also doubles as a transmit pre-mixer uh, the standard EMRFD uh, driver circuit and an IRF 510 and in the back very back area here is the low pass filter um, I, I wanted to uh, give myself enough room when I built this thing so that uh, we could uh, easily do all the things we needed to do and I wanted to demonstrate some functionality one change as of about uh, 10 minutes ago is I used to have displayed on the front panel uh, lower sideband and when you switch sidebands it would say upper sideband and to change uh, the first letter from U to L or L to U uh, because of the way the um, uh, loop works uh, you, you would have the U or the L flicker and someone uh, used my code and said man can't you fix that and uh, I didn't know how to do it so I came up with a little different solution and uh, this is tied in with the upper and lower sideband switch so if you see here there's a little red dot uh, right uh, next to lower sideband if I change the switch to upper sideband the dot moves up so now if you look at the panel and look for the red dot it'll tell you whether in your upper and lower side upper or lower sideband um, <clears throat> this has the display and actually I made the LO <coughs> quite uh, have quite a large range so uh, <coughs> if I wanted to put this in other bands I, I would could do a minimum amount of programming or if I bypassed the low pass <coughs> excuse me low pass filter and band pass filter I could uh, tune around <coughs> under certain band conditions you can uh, here, um, WWV at 10 megahertz. Uh, it's, it, there's enough of a signal slipping through the low pass, but boy, it's pretty faint. So this is. Uh, KC6 uh, Foxtrot Zulu Yankee KC6 Foxtrot Zulu Yankee November 6 Quebec Whiskey Norway 6 quarter wave calling Yeah, KC6, uh, Foxtrot Zulu Yankee, November 6, quarter wave, Norway 6, Queen Willie, N6QW. My name is Pete, Papa Echo Tango Echo. I'm located in uh, Newberry Park, California, which is about uh, 40 miles uh, uh, northwest of downtown Los Angeles. And uh, your report is about 5657. Uh, not terribly strong, but the band seems to be a little bit long. We're hearing stations from the Midwest. Uh, and I think your portable seven, KC six FZY, November six, quarter wave. Yeah, November six, quarter wave. Q Quebec Whiskey. This is KC six Foxtrot Zero Yankee. Yeah, well, thank you for coming back to me. I'm here in my uh, cabin in Duck Creek Village, Utah. It's outside of Cedar City, or right southwest part of the state. Not too far, too far from uh, uh, Bryce Canyon or Bryanhead, actually. Your signal is pretty good. It looks like uh, at least 5.9 here, but it doesn't fade in and out. 40 seems to be doing that today. And I'm running a, a new antenna I just built, and it looks like I've got my SWR down pretty well. I'm putting out 100 watts here, and uh, get back to you there. The name here, name here is Charlie. Name is Charlie, and. 
Yeah, Roger, Charlie. Very good. Uh, KC6, Fox, Strad, Zulu, Yankee in Utah. Uh, November 6, Quebec Whiskey. Well, your 100 watts is uh, doing just fine. And uh, like I said, I was here in the Midwest here just a few minutes ago, so the band must be going long. Uh, we're running about 200 watts here. Actually, it's a homebrew transceiver, uh, and you're our third contact uh, on this transceiver, Charlie. Uh, we just uh, finished it off here, and... Uh, uh, getting it boxed up uh, by itself it puts out uh, oh, about eight nine watts uh, but I am driving a uh, solid state amp uh, to about almost 200 watts uh, 200 watts into a droopy dipole so um, we're having a little fun putting this through the paces I heard you calling see through uh, CQ and I thought I'd give you a call back so uh, indeed uh, very very nice uh, again your report uh, maybe five seven five eight and uh, I noticed it was building the last time KC6 FZY in Utah, Port 7, November 6, Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, November 6, Quebec Whiskey, KC6 FZY slash 7. Very good. Oh, that little unit it sounds pretty good uh, in the, the dipole. you got a real solid signal. I have been contacting people uh, south of me in Arizona and New Mexico, and there were some other later signals out there. They may be from the Midwest. So it looks good from here uh, into the south. I've got a, uh, a Kenwood TS 440S putting out approximately 100 watts into an antenna I just uh, put together. It's uh, a uh, all pull buddy stick, basically. If you've heard of buddy stick or buddy pulls, it's a vertical. I have a uh, counter pull. Uh, actually, I think that's another word for a uh, one radio. And I've been adjusting the length here and I adjusted it now. I've got my SWR down to looks like almost one to one. It was running about one point three a little while ago. I just uh, shortened it by maybe twelve or fourteen inches. Good deal on that homebrew. Tell me a little bit more about uh, your homebrew transceiver. Uh, was it a kit or did you get it plans from uh, the amateur handbook or what where did that uh, design come from, Pete? Uh, yeah, very good, Charlie. KC6FZY uh, Slant 7, November 6, Quebec Whiskey. Well, uh, this is a, uh, a total design, um, my own design, and uh, I've uh, used a few bits and pieces that I've picked up in places, but it's not a kit, uh, and it's not somebody else's project that uh, I just built. And uh, actually, uh, it's using uh, sort of an interesting technology. Uh, I've got, uh, there are six, six J310 JFETs, uh, uh, two apiece are configured as uh, dual gate MOSFETs. So the receiver RF amplifier is also the transmit pre-mixer, pre-driver, and it uses a pair of them. Uh, and then the uh, IF amplifier stage has a, has a pair either side of a nine me commercial 9 megahertz filter. And uh, the driver stage uh, uses a 2N3904 with a BD139, and that's driving an IRF510. Uh, I have a blog, uh, www, uh, I'm sorry, uh, http n6qw.blogspot.com. That's n6qw.blogspot.com. I also have a website that I'm starting to uh, take all the information that was on the blog, and, and this has been ongoing now for several months. And I'm going to convert it over to the website, which is www.n6qw.com. I just started doing that the other day. Uh, it's got a nice uh, little digital display, uh, uh, color TFT display on it. And it uh, tells me the frequency and uh, what sideband I'm on. And uh, uh, shows the step function in terms of uh, step tuning rate. And uh, also it's got a uh, built-in tone so the, you can uh, press a button and it'll generate a 988 uh, hertz tone so you can run that through the balance modulator uh, so that you can do tune-up. It is selectable upper and lower sideband. Right now it's a single bander, uh, but uh, it could be put literally on any band. All you need to do is change uh, the band pass filter and low pass filter. Uh, so um, uh, I, it's one, you know, I, I've built quite a few uh, sideband transceivers and if you look at me up on the QR, my qrz.com page you'll see uh, quite a few of the transceivers so but this is the latest one using the jfets 
and uh, I'm, I'm quite, uh, quite enthused at its performance. So uh, there it is in the thumbnail, and you take a look at the blog and you'll, you'll get a better feel. Uh, KC6FZY N6QW. All right, the, the website the website is www.n6qw.com. That's just my call with a, a www on the front and a com on the back. So it's www.n6qw.com. The blog uh, where I've documented their circuit diagrams and photographs, construction photos, is n6qw.blogspot, B-L-O-G-S-P-O-T.com. QSL? Okay, got it that time. www.yourcallsign.com and the blog callsign.blogspot.com. Hey, I'll take a look at that. Uh, yeah, look at that. I'm an electrical engineer, retired anyway, and uh, that really sounds like an interesting, interesting project. That's a little above my uh, uh, skill level, probably, to do something like that right now. But uh, sounds really good. Looks good. I'm noticing that more digital designs out there as well. I haven't been very active for a while. I'm just getting back into the hobby. And uh, you may be about my 12th contact here in as many weeks. So uh, I'm running a little bit. But the digital radios look challenging as well. Have you thought about going and uh, you know putting a microprocessor in there? And, like that run your displays and that sort of thing. Uh, back to you, November 6, QWKC6, Yeah, that's, that's what it has. That's what it has. It has an Arduino Nano that drives a color TFT display, and the frequency generation is with a, uh, with a uh, PLL clock generator, which is the SI5351, and uh, it'll generate simultaneously the, the LO for tuning and it'll also generate the upper and lower sideband frequency. So uh, uh, the uh, PLL clock generator is a is a board that you buy from Adafruit Industries uh, for eight bucks, and the Arduino Nano you can get for about five six bucks. Color TFT display about five bucks. So what I'm telling you, Charlie, is for a twenty dollar bill you can have um, a uh, microcontroller controlling the SI5351. I uh, have a nice uh, color TFT display, and uh, uh, you're, you're you're not going to move. You're, it's not going to move frequency. And uh, if you look on when you look on the website and you look on the blog, you'll see pictures of the color TFT display, and uh, lots of code available. Uh, lots of guys are using these, so it's it's not something you have to start from uh, square one. Just uh, pick the stuff up, and uh, uh, you know you just uh, in, uh, implement it. Uh, a lot of the software is free. So uh, you can, uh, you know, to get the uh, development code for, for the Arduino, and that's a free download. And uh, I just have a lot of fun. So, uh, and it's some, some pretty small, uh, some of these displays are pretty small. I have used the OLED displays, the black and white. I have another rig here that uh, the OLED is one inch square, and it packs all the, all the information you'd want on, on that one inch uh, display. So uh, th this is a great time, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, in terms of the hobby, and if you'd like to do some home construction, uh, there's so much technology available uh, that uh, is so inexpensive. I mean, you think about a, uh, a, a digital frequency generator, both LO and BFO, a color display and a microcontroller that uh, gives you a, a tremendous amount of capability, $20 bill. KC6FZY, N6QW. Hey, Like to get a uh, 
receptor analyzer type display here, the, the waterfall display, and uh, without having to spend eight or nine thousand dollars on a Hewlett Packard uh, spectrum analyzer, it's pretty expensive. Twenty bucks, I think I could handle that. Maybe even seventy-five if I stretch. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the band, you're, you're coming in and going here. I think I'm going to uh, head on out here. I appreciate you coming back to my CQ. It's just uh, really exciting and to get the kind of information you have and the enthusiasm. I'll start taking a, more of a look into that sort of thing. So I'm going to say 73. Uh, uh, can you pee? I think I got uh, Sorry, I'm 74 years old, and sometimes I lose track of my notes here. I hope I got your name right. It's on my piece of paper someplace. There it is. Okay. Newberry Park. Okay. Well, I wanted to mention, yeah, I, well, I'm not in my cabin up here in Utah. I, am, uh, I live in San Clemente. I have a house there in San Clemente, so we're really not too far away. Not exactly neighbors, but, in, you know, probably 50 miles apart, something like that. Anyway, back to you, Pete. And it's good talking to you. We'll say 73. November 6th, Quebec Whiskey, KC6, Foxtrot, Zulu Yankee. You bet, Charlie, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. I got two years on you, so um, I, I know the problem of, of forgetting stuff. And, and let me tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. And uh, I'm also an electrical engineer, but uh, I, I never really worked at being an electrical engineer uh, for, for a living. I was mostly on the management side. And it wasn't until I retired 20 years ago that uh, I really uh, got, got serious about this hobby. So um, uh, I'm, I'm good in QRZ.com, and I have, there's an email in there. If you'd like to email me, I'd be glad to share any information with you that I've got. And, uh, y you know, some of these uh, rigs uh, fit in the palm of your hand, and, uh, and they do all kinds of things. So 7-3s, uh, enjoy the weekend. Glad we ran across each other. KC6FZY, a real pleasure and delight. N6QW, now clear. Well, there you go. You got a chance to see uh, the rig in actual operation. And again, I wanted to show uh, one of the things here is the upper sideband, lower sideband. Um, the little dot moves uh, in, in depending upon what uh, where, where you select the uh, upper or lower sideband. Another fun function is, and I'm, you can hear this, uh, normally what you do is I have a mock switch which puts, puts the rig in transmit. And uh, when you do that, then it's just, just like hit, hitting the grip, the talk switch. But this enables me to, to uh, generate the 988 hertz tone. And if you look, that's the tone for about 10 seconds. And you see tune on the screen here. Let you know it's in tune. And uh, then when the, when the tune cycles over, that uh, disappears off the screen. But if you put it in mox, it'll actually send out about... Uh, uh, I, it actually has a generated a, a square wave out of the Arduino, and uh, I've got a, a three-stage RC filter in there that kind of makes it look like a sine wave, so you get a nice pulse signal for, for tune-up. Um, the uh, other functionality is, uh, is just, uh, you know, the relatively small size. We're talking, uh, you know, four, uh, four and three-quarter inches by three inches here. So uh, this is N6QW. You heard the rig on the air. And um, you can see what it'll do, and you heard a little bit of the description as I was describing it to uh, KC6FZY Charlie there. And uh, we're kind of, uh, kind of excited about the, uh, the possibilities for this rig. So I'm going to upload this onto YouTube and uh, uh, say, uh, say my 7.3s, and uh, we'll probably do another video once I get the front panel painted, but I wanted to get all the holes drilled. And, uh, you know, all the scratches that you put on the panel, you don't want to do that on a painted panel. So uh, with that, I'll say my 7.3s. This is N6QW, not clear.